Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. The only answer I can think of is crochet. I don't even care what the question is. It's always crochet. So without further ado let's get on with today's tutorial. And welcome back to the Crochet Crowd of Souls. My friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Bernat Easy Blocks Crochet Blanket. This is using Bernat Velvet Twist. This is a generous size a throw. It is 48 inches by 58 inches using a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook today. Today for demonstration reasons I am using a six millimeter size J and I'll be using Karen one pound so you can exactly see where the stitches are going to go. It's a nice easy repeating pattern and once you get going it's gonna be awesome. Page number two of course is my favorite and it has the crochet diagram because we can change the size of this in no time at all. Let's show you how. On page number two is the crochet diagram and we have the stitch key just in case you don't know what those stitches mean when it comes to the symbols. Once you start understanding this it becomes a really quite an easy process to follow and I love crochet diagrams because you don't need to know a word of English. All you just need to know is what the symbol means. So it makes it very global especially for us in a global platform. So what we have here is if you like to change the size of this maybe 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 to a baby blanket maybe even bigger to a king size the multiples are seven plus six so you change in seven, 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 seven. Once you're happy with the width just add six more and then you'll have the balance so that you'll be able to do this. So the multiples are seven plus six. Without further ado let's begin to do our beginning instructions. So let's begin with the slip knot. You can either chain 125 with your size K six and a half millimeter hook with your Bernat Velvet Twist or you can change the size that you wish by using the multiples of seven plus six. So make a decision, chain 125 or do the customization. For myself I'll customize. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is it big enough? Yes or no? If not continue again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Big enough yes or no? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So make sure you don't email me or message me to ask me how many chains it's going to take for a blanket. All you just need to do is chain it and just put it next to something that you wanna match to like a blanket or a bedspread or anything that you would like to do and then once you're happy with it then you continue. Once you have your sevens in then to have the balance just chain six more. So one, two, three, four, five and six. And so now this chain will be ready for exactly this pattern. Let's begin the setup row which is not included in the instructions for the repeat. Let's begin the setup row. You gotta watch and pay attention to your stitch counts. So second chain from the hook you're going to single crochet. So please do that. And if you get the back hump of the stitch it looks better. So watch the counts now. Everything is always gonna be a chain of three but how many stitches you skip are not always the same. So here's what it's going to be. You're going to chain three. So the first time you'll skip three stitches. So one, two, three and single crochet into the fourth one away. And then you'll chain three again. So one, two, three and this time I only want you to skip two stitches. One, two, go to the third. That's what you're going to do all the way across. Okay, so chain three. So chain three is always consistent. So if you just skipped over two last time, you're skipping over three this time. So one, two, three, go to the fourth. Chain three. So if you skipped over three last time, you're only skipping over two this time. Hopefully that's making sense for you. So then chain three. And so you're gonna skip three, single crochet the next, then chain three, skip two and you're going to do that all the way across your chain. At the very end of your chain, one, two, three, you should end up that you're going to skip the final three that you see and you're gonna go into the fourth which is the very last one. And that's where you should end up with and this is the setup row and this will get you started to be able to do the rest of the project. And now let's begin row number one. 
So rows number one, two, three and four is the repeat for the entire duration of this blanket. So let's begin row number one. Right where you're sitting you need to chain three which will count as a double crochet and in the chain three space right here you're going to put in four double crochet. So let's count those in together. So we have one, two, three and four. So the next one that you see here is going to be something new. So you, after you get your four in chain one and you're going to double crochet right into the space and that's just gonna sit by itself in that lonely space and that's it. Chain one after it. So make sure you chain one before the double crochet, you slam in your double crochet and then you chain one after. The next one is going to be four double crochets into the same space. So we have one, two, three and four and then you're going to chain one and you're gonna come into the next space, double crochet by itself, chain one and then jump to the next space. And the next space you'll have four double crochet again. And you're gonna repeat that all the way across for your row number one and I'll be at the end of this row in just a moment if you just wanna stay, stay tuned and watch. So we have chain one, one double crochet by itself. So this will be the space, the second last space, chain one and in the last space here what you have to watch for is that you're going to put in four double crochet. So one, two, three and four but you're not done. You want to put in a double crochet into this last single crochet and that will stabilize your edge. And so when you pull it apart like this, this is what it looks like. And now you're ready for row number two. In row number two you're going to chain up one and you'll single crochet right in the top of this first double crochet and then everything is chain threes like I told you before. So it's always gonna be a chain three. So one, two, three. You're gonna come into the space before the single crochet or before the double crochet is by itself and you'll single crochet there and then you're going to chain three. One, two, three and you're going to single crochet on the other side of that lonely double crochet. This is very much like the modern granny. So chain three and then come into the next space after this right there. Single crochet, chain three and come into the space after it. So you're just looking really for spaces and just fill it in. So one, two, three, come into there. One, two, three, space. And so what you have to watch for is the very last one that you have. So you're gonna chain three and you're going to skip all the way to the last turning chain and you're going to put it in the top of the turning chain. The last single crochet in like that. And that will complete row number two. Let's start row number three. In row number three we're going to chain a total of four which will count as a, as a double crochet and a chain one space. So what I like to say to myself is that I go one, two, three, there's my double crochet and fourth is a chain one space and it helps me to remember. In the same space that you have right here you're going to place in a double crochet and then a chain one after it and what you're doing is these little lonely double crochets here, you're just shifting the location for them for next time, right? So now this space here, right above, just follow it up, is now gonna have your four double crochets. So it's almost like a brick wall if you wanna visualize it like that where the bricks are just changing their location so they're not straight out on top of each other but they're kinda just intermixed. Now you're gonna chain one come to this space here. See that it's above this four and that's gonna be a double crochet. Chain one and then come here. And you'll put in four double crochet there. So we have one, two, three and four. Chain one, come to the next space. Chain one 
come to the next space. And do you see how the stitches are moving from each other? They're opposite to what you had done before. Chain one. Come to the very last space that's available in the chain. Once you're at the end of the chain, you're going to double crochet, chain one, and in the last single crochet, I need you to double crochet. And let's turn this and take a look. So do you see how everything shifted? And that was row number three. So you have row number four, which will be the end of the repeat. Let's begin number four. Chain up one, and then you're going to single crochet into the top of the double crochet that you have. And everything is in sets of three, if you recall. So just watch this first edge. This is the only part that it's gonna be slightly different. So chain three, and you're gonna come into the space after the first double crochet. If you don't do this right here, what happens is that you lose your edge and the edge will then be sliding off like out of alignment. So just watch that. Chain three and you're just gonna play within the spaces that you can find. So here's a space right here. Chain three and then going into the next space that you find. Chain three and you're gonna do that all the way. So really these chain three lines which is row number two and four. Um, they're really quite easy to do. So watch the very end of number four here. So you're just gonna chain three and you are going to just go into the third stitch, the third chain here and you're gonna go right into the chain work itself. Don't go into a space and that will hold that edge from collapsing and then that's it. So this here is rows number one two, three, and four in the repeat. So if you need to do it over again, you can just reverse the video back. We have video chapters that you can click and that will take you right back to rows number one, two, three, and four. And let's talk about the repeat on how many times that we need to do it. So you're going to repeat this now, rows one through four, until you get approximately 58 inches. You need to end on the fourth row in order to have the balance because we do have two rounds of the border to complete to bring this to a conclusion. So continue just to go one, two, three, and four over and over and over and you can put this away once like the pattern away once you understand it. Just enjoy the stitching journey and then join me back here when you're ready to do the border and I'll show you how in a few moments from now and let's do that next. Once you're ready for the border, you're going to start and make sure that after you've done number four that you're going to turn and get ready. So after the whole blanket's done, this is number four and you're gonna start with your, your edging. The edging is really quite simple. You're just gonna chain one to start. This is considered a corner. So I would slam in three single crochets right into the corner so that will give it the 90 degree turn that you need. And then you have to equally space the single crochets along the top and side edging. So you can kind of look at what is going on with the pattern below it and just kind of fill it in. So there's no right or wrong answers. You can determine what you need to do in order to have that happen. So you're just gonna equally space out your single crochets and if you see it starting to ruffle out, meaning that it's all like uh, feathery looking, that means that you're going too slow and you're putting in way too many stitches. If you see it starting to collapse in on itself, it means that you're moving too quickly and it means that you're um, rushing too far ahead. So you gotta just take your time and put in a few extra stitches in order to keep the balance. As an experienced crocheter, I can actually do it pretty easily because I have that experience but uh, it may take you a few tries in order to get it done, get it done, but don't give up on yourself for sure. And you're gonna do that. When you get to another corner, you're just gonna turn your work. And how do you turn? You're going to place in three single crochets right into a corner. So right in the corner, three single crochets that will give it the 90 degree turn. So we have one, two, and three. And just naturally turn the project and then work down the side edge. When you go into a side edge, just make sure that you try to stay within chain work. If you grab around a whole po uh, post, it opens that up and it creates a really large gap on the edges. So you're gonna want to try to avoid that and you're just gonna equally space out your stitches on the sides. Again, the same rule. If it's buckling, then it means that you're moving, um, you're moving too fast or too slow. 
So then eventually you're just gonna come into the bottom edge and then you're working your way across. So please just finish this all the way around and I'll be back in just a few moments and I'll show you the last border round next. So once you come all the way back around you're just going to attach it to the first single crochet and it should be laying flat for you. Okay, so make sure that you've, I would check each side before you get this far but as an experienced crocheter I can see that this is flat. So what you wanna pay attention to on the second round of the border is that the middle single crochet at the corners will have three single crochets to allow it to still continue to turn. So right where I'm sitting I attach it to the first one, the first single crochet so I'm gonna just chain up one and put one single crochet in. The next one is the middle one of the grouping of three. So you put three single crochets there. And now because you've already done the, the leg work on doing the first round, all you just need to do now is just put one single crochet in each stitch all the way around and just watch out for those middle ones of the corners and make sure three get placed in the middles to keep that corner turning at a really nice angle. Okay, so please do this all the way around and I'll see you at the end of the border round, second round which is the last round of this blanket. So I'm coming all the way back around and I'm just going to join it to the first and then that's it. So your blanket should be nice and flat just like you see it here on camera. So we're going to just trim this yarn when you're ready. Any loose ends that you will have you're going to wanna use the same principle and you wanna favor the back side of the project. You'll be able to tell what that is by looking at the stitch work and uh, so all you're just going to do is put it through a tapestry needle and staying on the back side and glide the leftover yarns through the stitch work but do not allow the needle to be showing on the good side of the work. Okay, that means that you're too deep. Just stay within the fibers and if you can get your needle to actually break apart fibers on the other side in the back then what happens is, is that it becomes almost impossible to take out. So make sure before you do that though, you, you're, you're confident with your stitches for sure. So you're gonna go back and forth the total of three times and then that will conclude how to do this particular project. It's a nice easy repeating and it's really neat and it's like a modern granny but with a little bit of a difference and that's what we have for you today. So on behalf of my friends at Yarnspirations.com we hope that you have a good one and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.